following program on Ave Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on another episode on Gen XYZ. Now, as you all know, this is a program where we talk about topics or issues based on the youth. Now, 2023 has just started in and it just kicked in. But haven't y'all noticed, like at the end of each year, we try to reminisce what happened to us during this year, the things that we did, have we been productive with ourselves? We think about the people that we have met and the people that we've lost and the incidents that we faced throughout the year. And we think that, okay, Next year, I'm going to do something a little bit more better. And we don't know what the next year has in store for us. But right now, I would say the young adults or the teens are facing a hard time to figure out what they want to do in the future because time is very uncertain at this time. And something I learned the past year is that, you know, you can't predict anything at this point. You might be having goals, you might be having dreams, and you might set timelines for them to be achieved. But then environments change, circumstances change, people change, and with all of those factors, your mindset also changes. So with that, on the show today, we have a group of young adults who are here to share their experiences and to share a little bit of goss about their lives on what they did in the previous year as well. So let's go and have a look at who they are. Nice to meet you all and thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show today and at the beginning of the year as well. How have you all been doing? So far we're good. 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 Okay. okay, so I might be knowing you all but then our viewers don't. So this is Suhanya Devanshi Hi. and uh, Menasha De Silva, uh, Achala uh, Shanuka, Hi. Michelle Cruz and uh, Kashiv Zia. So I might tell them just their names, but I think our viewers would like to know a little bit more about you all. So Suhani, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Okay, so hi, as she said, my name is Suhani Devanji and I'm a law student and I, as, and I study IR as well. But if I speak about myself, I guess I'm a free soul, living my life, enjoying what I do, I guess. So yeah, that's pretty much about me. Mena? Um, so hi, I'm Menasha. Uh, I'm currently a marketeer at a multinational company. Um, I would also describe myself as a free soul, um, who's currently, um, I'm, I'm trying to be more adventurous in this new year. And uh, yeah. Uh, so first of all, thank you for having me for this wonderful discussion. So talking about myself, my name is Achila Shanuka. I'm 23 years old and I'm a fresh graduate from NSPM Great University. Hi, so my name is Michelle Cruz. I'm currently working in an international INGO and also I'm um, currently having my own business as well uh, which is called Treasure Box and I'm 28 years old and I would describe myself as a person who likes to do a lot of new things and I love to travel so much so yep. Hi I'm Kashif Zia, a marketer by profession. Uh, so I'm attached to a local uh, FMCG company that caters the local and foreign market with fast moving consumer goods. So I've been in this industry for almost five years. All right, so, so many free souls and explorers we have here. And again, I want to thank you all because I know that the new year has been a little bit busy for me. I don't know about you all, but for me, it has started off quite busy. So how would you all describe 2022? Suhanya? Okay, to start off with, I think it was quite a challenging as well as a life-changing year for me. And I think it was a receiving and as, a, as well as a giving year for me as well because there were a lot of turn-ups, there were high points as well as low points in my life. So yeah, that's pretty much, I guess. Menasha? 
Um, definitely a challenging year, and it was a year of so much change um, in the country with this economic situation, and also I had to react to that. So there was a lot of changes in my personal as well as professional life, I would say. And I would also call it a year of acceptance because there were so many things that was beyond our control, so had to accept a lot of things as it was. All right, so I believe that 2022 was actually challenging for me as well. And if I describe it a little bit more, I would say it was a year of exploration of myself also. You guys can relate to me if you want also. But now I feel the incidents which has been happening throughout 2022, we try to have a little bit of expectations of what we want for the, pre uh, the next year to come, right? So now, the previous year, at the beginning of uh, 2022, January at this time, what were you all doing? For me, of course, for the first time, I was infected with COVID. And that was a first for me. What happened with you guys? Well, it was a new year. So two years after COVID, things were getting back to normal. So we were expecting a normal year similar to 2018, 19, a pre-COVID time where everything goes back to normal. So that was the expectation. But a couple of months down the line, you have different surprises coming your way. So with that, I think um, it led to new challenges, new experiences, and also a learning which came out of it and made you look at yourself and realize uh, what the future could be and how you need to adjust yourself, how do you navigate the situation to all of it. So a lot of learnings. Have any of you all been infected with COVID? Yes, I have. You have? How was the experience? Was it last year? Yes. Oh, no. February. <laughs> In Feb, um, yeah. okay. And I was like, I was like a person who thought that, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, infected with this. It's not a, like, you know, I was that kind of person. <laughs> totally, I know. In 2021, we were perfectly fine. We didn't have COVID at all. Yeah. But then 2022 hits, the first thing of the year, you know, oh you are infected God. with COVID. Yeah, it was like, um, yeah. so me and my brother actually got it. Um, and we were like, um, okay, what do we do now? Why, what should we do? I mean, it was just... Uh, it wasn't bad for me, uh, but you know, with all the perception that everyone had and you know, no one wanted to like, come, obviously. And so, but somehow it was okay. We managed to, you know, get around things and get things done as well. So, yeah. Yes. For me also, like COVID was not that severe, but then Still, you know, we had the rules that we need to follow, two weeks of quarantine at home. My gosh, I'm not a person who likes to stay at home at all. So me staying at home for the two weeks, it was like torture because I know that I can come to work and do something and learn something. So it was terrible for me. What was your experience, Sachin? Luckily, I survived from COVID, <laughs> thanks to the God. So yeah, I, so I don't have any experience with the COVID because I survived. What were you doing at the beginning of last year? Yeah, as Kashif and everyone said, a lot of expectation, high expectations, because uh, as I said, I was uh, doing my uh, degree at that time. So uh, we had a lot of expectation at that time. So we, back to, we went back to the university and we went to physical lectures. But suddenly after the economic crisis, the things get back to uh, which COVID situation. So all the lectures shifted to the online uh, lectures and uh, exams went to the online exams. But didn't you all have online uh, studying in 2020 as well? 2021? 2021, yes. With the COVID uh, thing, all the lectures shifted to the online uh, lectures. So it was a very new experience because we didn't have that kind of experience earlier uh, by doing online exam and online lectures. So yeah, it was very uh, interesting and very uh, good experience. Interesting. Yeah, okay. it was a very new experience. <laughs> A very really new experience by doing lectures online and doing exam online. So we got the opportunity to do the open book exams, which is really <laughs> tough, but <laughs> I, I think that right. Now, as y'all said, now when we are starting a new year, so many expectations. Okay, this year is going to be like this. Now in 2022, y'all would have probably started off like that. Has any of it happened for y'all? I would say yes, because I feel like uh, most of the things initially, the beginning of the year was very subtle for me. And I guess I was not very, I didn't have a proper plan or anything as such. I don't have plans normally. I just go on with the flow. And it has been a good year. I guess the things which I wanted to do, like wanted to get done, like my completing my LLB and then starting uni. And one of my major, like what, what I wanted mainly was to meet new people. And I think... Uni, local uni was shut down for about, I think, more than one and a half years. I just been for three months ever since the beginning. So 
it started back and I think I started receiving, I, I started getting a lot of friends and a lot of new memories were created. I think that was like the best thing in 2022 for me. I made a lot of people and a lot of new non-toxic memories. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. As far as I remember, Suha, I think you mentioned that it, when you started off uni, you were very reluctant because you were scared about the ragging and all of that and meeting new people. Also, you didn't know who you were going to meet and who you could trust. But now in 2022, when you had to go back to uni again, I feel that you were interested to go back. Yes. Why was, was it so? Because initially, as you said, I was a person who went and said, okay, I don't want to go to local uni. And, you know, I was doing another degree. So I was like very happy with it. And I, I, I was actually, I skipped uni. I said, I don't want. And first few years, I remember I came and I cried with you all. I was just saying, oh God, it's torture for me. I don't know what they'll sell to me and all this stuff. But I feel like, you know, if you meet the right people inside and if you get the right people around you and that is really really important like that's how I so far at the moment also I have got these friends who actually support me so much and I think they are so easy to work with and like in uni I think that's very important because you're friends with everyone but it's not like you can be with everyone for for all the hours and I think it's very important to find that safe space and that you know that comfortable space for you and I think I found that and it was it's interesting and I think I've made one, so many beautiful memories inside it and I miss it and I'm sad that I have to stop it soon so yeah oh okay so Menasha and Kashif now both of you all are in uh, corporates would you like to relate with Suha or do you have a different experience in the corporate world well so we also had certain expectations when we started the year both in terms of our careers and then personal life as well so certain things we were able to take those boxes I think with time progressing and certain things fell short of due to external challenges and issues and uh, with that I think we were able to navigate most of the things and anything you'd like to add Minasha? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we spend a lot of time planning anyway like quarter on quarter we plan um, our activities and I feel like 2022 was impossible to plan we were always you know changing plans every day because the situation out there was accelerating so fast so I would say it was a lot more challenging in terms of um, proceeding with our day-to-day -day, um, work duties it was a lot different um, and we had a lot of expectations because we spent two years previously with COVID and with lockdowns, but we had to go back to working from home last year with the poor crisis. So that was a bummer for sure. So you all preferred coming to work physically than working from home? At times, yes, because you want that human interaction, that physical connect. Mm -hmm. uh, at times it's easy to work when you're in office, when you have the team with you. So it was a mix. And uh, with the poor crisis, I think we were again shut down where we had to work from home because we, were, we found it difficult to commute to work to all of it. All right. So, yeah. Michelle, was it the same with you with the NGO? Um, yeah, actually, um, it was challenging at first because we had to, we had a lot of field visits before, none of those things, we couldn't do it. Um, there were a lot of challenging times. But I think after um, so many, I mean, two years of COVID and we got used to it. And I think we also performed better as well working from home, even though we missed the ability to just go out to the field and get to know people, see what is their situation. Um, but um, I think overall, personally to me, I preferred working from home as well because I got to do a lot of things other than work as well. So yeah, it was actually um, challenging, but good. <coughs> okay. Achana, what was the best thing you experienced in college last year? Last year, yeah. Uh, as said earlier, with the COVID-19 and other crisis situation, uh, we lost a lo lot of wonderful memories because we didn't get a lot more time to interact with people because we didn't get much time to go to the university. Uh, personally, I did plenty of extracurricular activities. so. I did plenty. Uh, so I was the uh, head of the board of one of the biggest association in our university as well. So we made a lot of good friends, we made a lot of good experience and a lot of good memories together. But with the COVID and other economic crises, as I said, uh, all the things shifted around to the online and uh, we didn't get the physical uh, interaction with the people. So. Uh, 
we have both good memories and the bad memories in 2022. But for personally for me, I enjoyed a lot of good things in 2022. All right. Something that I would like to relate with you is that my brother goes to the same university as yeah. you are and he's also involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. He specifically joined that uni because of the extracurricular activities. But unfortunately, now he can't go because last year the lockdowns were there and everything shifted to online. And well, he was pretty bummed out too. So with that, we'll have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and in the first segment we were in discussion with uh, my friends, uh, the young adults who were describing their year of 2022. Now I think we are comfortable enough with our coffee also and I want to continue this discussion. Have you all thought of, uh, has it ever crossed your mind to migrate? Michelle? Absolutely not <laughs> actually. Um Mainly because, um, like I said, um, even though 2022 has been challenging for me, I would describe it as a year of transformation for me. Um, I think, Shanali, you and I can relate how I was in 2022 in the beginning. I think I was all over the place, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but however, I think that year, I just took some time for myself in the beginning and then I started evaluating my decisions in every aspect of my life and um, personally and spiritually emotionally in every aspect I think I just gave more time to myself and started looking at new opportunities um, new things to do and even in my own business I've been doing really well it has just um, gone I, I would just say it has just gone dimensions when I'm compared with the previous year as well. And in terms of my work as well, I've been getting promotions, I've been, I just started traveling to the field after two years, and um, even spiritually I was getting close to God, and just it has just been um, amazing, I would say. So um, there has absolutely, be no chance of me even thinking about migrating. I just want to make sure that this year I'm just trying to um, get to know myself more and just improve and transform, transform more than last year. Wow, that would be the first because most of the people yeah. that I've met. So I just want to add something yeah. to that. It's a very controversial topic. Exactly. <laughs> you're going yes. to migrate or you are going to stay in Sri Lanka. Uh, different people have different perspective, but for me personally, I believe if you have the op opportunity to go great and if you think you can have a better life than Sri Lanka in a, some place, I would say definitely you have to go because uh, you need to think about your uh, children, you need to think about your future. I know I'm very small to talk about these sort of things, but uh, if you are a future oriented person, you need to think about your future. But it's, as I said, it's very personalized. Uh, someone can say, no, I don't, don't want to migrate. I just want to stay and I'm having a good life in Sri Lanka. So why I'm going to migrate? No need to migrate because I'm having, already I'm having a good life in Sri Lanka. But some can say, as I said earlier, no, I want to improve. I need to upgrade my life. So then they, if they want to migrate, definitely they can go. Yeah, I feel that Michelle was lucky this time then. <laughs> yeah. And also I was able to travel like um, after two years again, like for three countries this year. Like I'm, I'm a traveler, so I've been to almost 30 countries. So and wow. uh, this year just going to three countries, I was just like, you know, over the moon. Like finally I get to travel again. So everything I think aligned this last year. So for me, I would just um, say it has just been great. <laughs> yeah, well, I would like to say like a lot of people would beg to differ because with the economic crisis, the fuel crisis, people just didn't want to stay here. The first opportunity that they get, they would like fly abroad. 
without any reason also they might not be having a job or a place to study even but still they just wanted to leave the country so now with all of these challenges it has taken a huge toll on our stress mentally and emotionally i think uh, suha i think you can relate to me on this would you like to explain a little bit about your uni life and the situation there because you interact with uh, a lot of uh, uni students yes. how was it there and i think i interact with a different level like my range is pretty wide and vast because it's from different different classes i don't even want to mention classes but you know it's a wide range of people not the same level that i've been mingling with in school and then when you go there you get different people of all the clans and i think i sat for exams throughout like i was telling my mother if i go back and look at myself i think i sat for about 24 papers i was telling my mother i sat for 24 papers in and out only in one uni and i was just like i can't at one there were moments that i kept on saying i can't but i i pushed myself through and it has been and that's why i kept on saying it was challenging but i don't think it was challenging in the same way for a lot of people as well because i see a lot of like you know the mental capacity and mainly with covid and all i feel like everyone has been stuck at home and because of that the emotional attachments and even the relationships that they have with people have minimized and because of that i feel like they've become backward as well because you know the normal mingling that you do in your day to day activities and even the mask as i told you before you know people are not expressing themselves they still feel comfortable to wear the mask so that they don't have to like even if you smile or cry you're still behind something there's a veil closing yourself when you express so i feel like that has hindered a lot as well and even the suicide rates and the mental health issues mainly inside unis i tend to see a lot of people dropping out and i see a lot of people emotionally challenged and their depression one of the biggest issues i see because you know mainly with the workload and the economic issues as i told you the varieties and the different people that we meet and i feel like it's one of the main things that we have to push through as the youth because when we come forward i feel like mental health is so important self care things Definitely. like that should be promoted because they don't understand that it's important you know we feel that it's important but you know the different the country is so wide even though we call it very small and the place where we come from might not be having the same set of values and it the cultural difference so i think it's very important that we promote that because mental health is drifting mainly inside universities with the workload and i think it's more because of the economic crisis and you know they're not coping with it and i see a lot of people crying and you know and you know they tend to stop and you know the suicide rate also i feel like and they see that as the easiest option so because of that i think you know it's it's it was emotionally challenging but i think challenging is something which takes us forward and yeah definitely i think because you know there is there's no support here in sri lanka even if you take the elders here the older generation they don't take mental health very seriously because they did not have these problems previously but when it comes to our current generation we are going through so much and people are unaware how to handle these things like even if you take a simple relationship between a boy and girl i feel like you know because of the fuel crisis my gosh they couldn't meet up i've had people coming and telling me i have not seen her for so long i don't think this is going to work but why why can't you be a little bit more strong like things can get better right so kashif how can you relate to me on this have you had any experiences like that yeah <laughs> not really but uh, <laughs> just going back to 2022 Uh, something that would have pulled me down is i think uh, extended power cuts because you're working you're working from home and then i remember at a particular point there were power cuts ranging from 6 hours to 8 hours and at one point it was up to about 10 hours from evening to o'clock till midnight 12 o'clock no electricity nothing so you're supposed to work from home you don't have fuel to go to uh, office and work you're supposed to work from home but then you charge your laptop to o'clock you're done with current you don't have electricity you start working and then by 4 4:30 your laptop is gone then you try joining meetings from your phones and then by 6 6:30 that is gone and from 6 till midnight like no fan no light nothing no yeah. and that also, would yeah. like pull you down because you don't have anything to do you are just there and then whatever work that you miss during work hours you have to either wake up early or cover up to it pull long hours to all of it 
So I think that is one thing in 2022, if at all, which would have put me down. So I think all of us, we've adjusted to this one to two or three hour power cuts, which is not okay, but I think there's no so choice. So we got to adjust, but going up to 10 hours, 12 hours per day, that was something which was um, beyond something which we could all absorb. Yeah, that's and true. I think I could relate to that as well because I think I cracked down at one point and I remember sending you all the message also saying, oh God, I can't do this because I was having exams and it was online as well. And my paper was for four hours and my lap was also not going to survive for that long. And I remember it was about 15 hours and like they used to give us one hour breaks. So I used to shift coffee shops because I had to study. It was about three weeks for my exams and I didn't have any other option and I was like tearing down most of the time because I was not ready for my exams as well. So I think power cuts were a major drawback. Same thing life. happened to me as well because we had 24 hours exam, online exam, so without <laughs> power it's it's terrible to do the exams and I want to add one more uh, incident which I faced in last year. Uh, so I started working as well while I'm doing my degree. So I live in Godagama. It will take uh, nearly uh, two hours to go from uh, Kilambo to Godagama. So after uh, going home, no electricity. Uh, so I have to do my assignments uh, in the night and next day I need to go to office once again. And it was really stressful in that moment. Yeah. And also, how do you cope up with the travel restrictions and the fuel crisis? Did you manage to go to work? Because a lot of people couldn't. The public transport was not available. Suhanya, so, you're laughing. I think you have a good story to tell us. <laughs> good stories, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Ayuni decided not to, like, you know, stop because of the travel restrictions and because of the fuel crisis. So, I had to go to uni. I had papers during that time. And... My parents were like, okay, I'll drop you, but like my papers were four hours. So, but they said they can't stay for four hours just to come and pick me up. So I had to come in the bus because even took because it was absurd to go all that way and the prices were really bad. So first day I got one of my friends to, I, I don't travel by bus much or this was my first experience. So I took my friend and she was like, okay, let's go. So I remember getting into the bus first bus was fine because she was with me and I didn't know where I was even like I was just walking around and then I got into the second bus and I was lost I didn't know where I was and I kept on asking people and I felt like all everyone was following me at one point and I remember I, I always think it was God who said there was this nice young gentleman who was like miss are you lost and I was like yes I don't know how to go to <laughs> because I stopped a guy and he asked for 2,000 rupees and it was just a three minute drive and I was like, I didn't even have that much money in my hand and I remember I stood from the beginning and up until I come to Nugegoda and it was like a proper packed bus and I, I remember it's slanting towards one side because people were ha hanging on to it and it was so bad. When I got down I had fever and I was like down for about one week. But I still had no option, right, because I had exams and I had to go and I, it, it was not reasonable of me to ask my parents to stay for four hours continuously. So, yeah. It was definitely terrible, terrible. even for you all to drive, you know, it was difficult to find fuel well, yeah. at that time. And the public transport was hell, as you said. Yeah. You can't even stick a finger in there. Exactly. And it was so smelly. And <laughs> <laughs> That's and true. And the hours that you spent in fuel queues, I mean... That was a huge toll on both your mental and physical health because some days you would go in the morning and stay there, have the meals in the car, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And you would take shifts with your father and other family members. I think that was one of the, apart from the electricity um, challenge that we had, I would say the fuel crisis was a big. I also could big relate impact. to it because I went and parked in the queue and I was in the queue for five days. So for luckily, five days. yeah, but luck I just parked the car in the night and went home. I couldn't be bothered staying. But during the daytime, I had to stay there to move the car in front and to move the car back. So one day was a uh, working day as well as a weekday. So I had to take my laptop, go there, work in a nearby coffee shop while the uh, queue was moving to all of it. So I think, uh, again, it, it was challenging. And after thereafter, I decided that I will save that petrol like gold and not even uh, <laughs> go anywhere at all until the issue is resolved because it's not easy to stay there for four or five days and uh, the expense plus the time and there's no value addition at all you're just in the queue for a very long time just to move the vehicle in front and get some fuel 
So and there you also see different sort of arguments going and people fighting to all of it. So uh, yeah, you see those, you get certain learnings as well, but I would say utter waste of time to spend a lot of time. An hour or two, yes, we could compromise on that, but staying for four or five days was a hectic thing to absorb. I must say, like, y'all are sharing all these experiences with me, but still having a smile on your face. Yes, it was a challenging year. <laughs> Very optimistic, this crowd is. <laughs> so, do y'all have any expectations for the next year? No, before we go into that, now y'all said, now, at the latter part of the year, everything was shape okay like calming down getting back to normal getting back to normal so how can you describe that were y'all able to shift back to normal were y'all getting used to the challenges that y'all faced i think we found new ways around it for example like um like michelle i'm also someone who loves to travel and i wanted to do that amidst the challenges so i remember we took a girls trip um, <laughs> uh, to candy by train and that was a new experience for us like most of us, it was yes. our first time. Yes, yeah, so we found new, we had gotten, we had, like I said, in my pre, in, the, in my earliest uh, pieces, it was a year of acceptance. We had accepted the fact, okay, power cut is not going to go away. So I had to adapt to that. Poor crisis is going to stay there for a while. So I had to adapt to that. So, yeah, we really had to found, find new ways around it. Okay, so many stories y'all shared with me today, but uh, I want to know what y'all have in store for 23, uh, 2023 as well. But before we go into that, we'll go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ and we'll be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we've reached our last segment of the show. Now continuing with our discussion, I, the previous segment we were talking about the fuel crisis, the energy crisis and the hardships that we faced emotionally and mentally. And another thing that happened during April time was uh, the people's revolution and people called it the Aragale. And you know, curfews were imposed because of that as well and a lot of scandals were taking place here and there. So. What was your experience with that? Did you all face any hardships because of that? Because I believe it was a little bit a scary period for everyone to even step out of the house at that time. So Michelle I is waiting. Actually, share her yeah, story. I actually have a nice story to share. So I think uh, somewhere in May, uh, we just had our first field, field visit after two years, right? So all of us, my team was excited, pumped up. We were like, okay, we're gonna go on a field visit. And it was for at least three days. Uh, but however, due to the revolution and everything, um, at once uh, we got a call from our managers and seniors saying, okay, you have to come back. There's this uh, thing happening around the country and everyone's outside, there's a lot of chaos and things like that. We were like, oh my God, no, 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 no. And we just wanted to see, it might settle. We were just thinking it might settle, but no, it was just getting worse and worse. So we had to come back. Uh, so I'm from Negambo. So uh, when we were coming back, um, so we were faced with this a situation where everyone was on the road and everyone was checking everyone. We had to get down and, you know, like everyone was checking what we were having, like in the vehicles and they were with chains and uh, questioning us, where have we been? And there were a few girls as well and it, we were like actually pretty scary. I mean, scared, so scared. We were like, okay, can we go home? Can we go home today? And things like that. But somehow we managed to go home, but it took like at least four, five, six hours to just get home. On our way, there were so many other things happening. So we were like, we were actually worried that day. But somehow uh, we managed to get home and all of us were safe. <laughs> Uh, that was a pretty scary ex experience for all yeah, of us. Yeah, definitely. That was not a good time to step out of the homes. Either and the people who were there at work also, I think they were stuck at work. They couldn't step out. And it was definitely a daunting experience. Has anyone of you all experienced something like that? <laughs> not really. <laughs> so, like, I was just yeah. <laughs> at least she had some uh, a good story to share. You know? yeah. Everything else was all flowery and bubbly for her <laughs> last year. So now coming back to 2023, do you all have any resolutions for this year? 
What do you all think resolutions are not okay? It's, it's a farce. I usually, uh, not resolutions, I usually um, have goals for the year and I plan ahead for the year. But this year I made a choice not to make any resolutions or goals because the lesson from last year was that you can plan, plan, plan. You can put so much effort into it, but things don't go according to plan. Yes, that is so, true. Just because you remember the trip true. that we planned, you know, there were mm. so many obstacles. Yes. And I think oh, even for me, I feel like I prefer it to be a spur, a spur of the moment thing because last year was very spontaneous for me as well. And I also have goals. I don't have resolutions per se. I just think I want to finish this, 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 rather than that I don't plan ahead. I would never do that. And I also feel like I also want to just go on with the moment and, you know, be attitude wise just to adapt according to what comes through. Yeah, I also feel that's the case because people might set goals, they might have dreams, but and they might set timelines for them to be achieved as well. And when you don't achieve it during it's that timeline, a lot of pressure, depression also. And people think that they are incapable un of doing anything that they want. So I also came into the mindset where, you know, just tackle each day as it comes. But it's also important to have. Yeah, a it's okay bit of, to plan uh, long term yeah. goals and it's okay to uh, have long term to, goals. But uh, Gen Z, we as a youth uh, have been facing a crisis after crisis, starting off with yes. the East attack and COVID, uh, economic crisis. We can't predict what's going to happen in tomorrow. So, uh, so it's always good to have a short-term goals while having a long-term goals. So let's break it down the long-term goals into the short-term uh, period and let's try to achieve that. So that's my main objective and the vision for the 2020. Yes, I'm feeling extremely sorry for the, the younger crowd who's doing A-levels and O-levels. The exams were postponed multiple times, mm. even for you, Suha. I think the state unis also postponed their exams. Yeah, because you know, we are getting old in the same place and we are exactly. still going to uni, you know. Yeah, And still I have one and a half years more to go. How do you feel about that? Personally, I like going to uni, but I don't want it to drag. You know, because you know, I'm done with my LLB. I just want to move on. And I have other things that I want to do with life. Maybe at least start to work. That's something that I always wanted to do. But like, if I just check out and if I check my schedule, it's hard to work. So because I have lectures all around. So I feel like, yes, it's hard. But still, I think I like it. I like going there. So yeah. OK. So now we've started 2023. And we are in the second week of January. Okay, and uh, how has this year been treating y'all so far? So far, so good. <laughs> so, looking forward okay. to have more memories and experience in this year as well. Kashif, what about you? I think it is a lot to do with the attitude you have, how you see things, and because if you're always with this negative mindset that if something goes wrong where you start complaining about it, you might not be able to move from point A to B, B to C, and so on. So I think it's about your attitude, how you look at things, how passionate are you about, how hopeful, how positive you are. So I think with that, with that mindset, the correct mindset, you might be able to move a long way. But if you have this negative mindset where you don't want to see progression, you don't want to be progressive, that might pull you down and might not help you in your journey. So Kashif, have you seen a shift in the corporate industry now comparing last year and this year? Now, in the middle of last year, I think there were so many job cuts and people were cutting down salaries and all of that. How is the situation now? Um, so, majority of the talent migrated. Majority, I would say, I would say at least a considerable number of talent uh, individuals migrated. But per se, companies which we worked in didn't go into uh, job cuts or salary cuts, but there were different other things which the companies would have looked into to make sure that we manage the budget because everything is going up in cost, but then you have a limited budget to do certain things, do certain activities. So I think the companies, big companies would have been able to face it well because you have that expertise coming in. Uh, but smaller companies, smaller startups or uh, regional players would have faced it challenging to cope up again if you don't have the right mindset. You have this growth mindset, you have a positive mindset, companies would have been able to face it and absorb. But uh, if you don't have that mindset, I think uh, that's one key reason which would bring you down. All right. Coming back to you, Achala, um, as a student, now do you have any plans in the future for this year to start working? Wait, you said you're yeah, interning already, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So how has it been like balancing work and studies at the same time with all these challenges? Yeah, 
to be honest, it was very uh, challenging to balance both academic and the corporate works because uh, to manage 24 hours is very challenging, obviously. So I have a lot of uh, plans in 2023. I just want to uh, grow in the corporate ladder while balancing my studies. So I'm planning to do my MBA as well while I'm working. So we'll see how it's going in 2023. Michelle, do you have any plans for this year? Yes, definitely. But let me just um, go around um, last year. So like I said, um, it has been a transformational year. So what I actually did was I actually put a theme for myself. That was like, you know, I just thought that's like, you know, me becoming a butterfly from a caterpillar. So that's how <laughs> I related it like last year. But this year I actually had a theme for myself again. Um, I just th um, thought it should be like something like a shining star. So whatever I'm doing, I'm like my goals, short term, long term, whatever it is, I'm trying to align it with my theme for this year. So what am I going to do in certain asp aspects of life? Like will, how, how will that relate to my theme? So that is like, it's not like a new resolution, but you know, like for the entire year, like a theme. Okay, how will that help me? Kind of thing. I'm just so glad that this crowd is so optimistic <laughs> <laughs> because like most of the people that I've spoken to like even the young crowd they say that no I have no hopes this year I'm so depressed it's no point having any dreams because I know that it won't be I won't be able to achieve it but then y'all y'all are like yes this happened to me that happened to me but still looking forward for tomorrow I'm, I'm so glad about that now um, Menasha, why, uh, how can you relate to now you've been in the corporate industry as well and you've also had to go through, you know, lockdowns and certain situations like that. How did your family take it as a girl, as a woman? Was it challenging for them also now with uh, the Aragale, with the fuel crisis, you still had to go to work. Uh, how did they take it? Uh, I think um, transportation and travel was one of the biggest concerns from the family end because I had a tr uh, trusted transport partner which was who was not able to provide because of the fuel crisis and there were no uh, pick me's or ubers available as well so they uh, they kind of um, really advised me to work from home as much as possible even though i'm someone who likes to go to office and work and mingle uh, so there they had to be a lot more protective uh, given the circumstances um, in the outside with the aragalia and the crisis so and apart from that they knew uh, the goals but that I wanted to achieve in the year and they were kind of feeling anxious on how my career and life would pan out with these changes that's happening in the country. Okay, something that I learned from y'all as well, even though y'all faced a lot of challenges, y'all learned something out of it. I think, uh, Menasha, you mentioned it uh, before the program, like when the fuel crisis came, it actually pushed you to learn driving. Yes, And yes. you got your license also and yeah, that's that's about adapting into life and some people they also you know shifted into cycling mm, like a lot of people yeah. they bought bicycles and they learn how to cycle to work and that also you know kept them fit also in a way well i like this crowd because they somehow <laughs> see a loophole somewhere <laughs> and all this negativity they somehow find a way out and um, to end this off with what message can you give to the people who are watching this, especially the young crowd who has, who's demotivated right now? Oh, it's another year, I don't know what to do, I'm lost, you know, the country is not in a good state, my mental state is not good. What can you tell to them? I think uh, it's all to do with your, the having a right mindset, positive mindset, so that you know what your objectives are, you know what your goals are, and you focus in terms of achieving those, rather than keep on complaining or pushing back and not accepting new challenges. So if you are out of that mindset, you are able to look at things with a fresh mindset and go for it. I think that is what would take you from uh, strength to strength. Michelle? Mm, definitely, I would agree with you. Uh, like what I did was like, I found like what, um, what, what kind of things that I would like to do. So for me, I spiritually, I, um, him close to God. So that's something that I loved and that helped me a lot to um, go after what I want and find what I love and just do what I love the most. So uh, my advice would be like find whatever you like and just go after it. 
Yes, Achala, would you like yes. to? Yes, uh, my last message for the people who are watching this, always believe in yourself, always back for yourself. So personally, I'm not going to regret about the any decision that I took in my life. Whether it's right or wrong, I'm always backing to that decision. So I just want to say, believe in yourself and do the basic things. Menasha and Suhanya? Uh, well, one thing that I learned is that change is the only constant and that really um, proved itself in the last year. And something additional that I want to add apart from uh, uh, what my friends here said is that uh, we need to learn to be a lot more sensitive this year and more empathetic because I think we have had our privilege checked today, uh, but there's a lot more people that are really struggling and going through serious difficulties and hardships. So look at each other with a lot of sensitivity and help each other as much as you can. True, what you just said. Empathy is something that is lacking. I think even with the children that you tend to see nowadays, when they go to school, since they've like, you know, they've jumped nursery, they've jumped grade one, and they've gone to grade two directly. It's like a leap jump, and they don't know how to sit. They don't know how to interact with people. Because I see that a lot in my mom's class because they are so vandalized and they don't even like you know that's normal the normal nature that we expect so uh, as i move forward in 2022 it's the attitude for me i think the way whether it's good or bad it's the way we always take it right whether it's the acceptance procedure that we go through so i want to as i said before the attitude and the, the way i look at things if it's positive whether it's good or bad, it will be all right. And I want to like think about how you want to embrace yourself. Self-care is so important. If you want to get your nails done, get your nails done. If you want to go for a ride, you go and do those stuff because that's very important, I think, because that gives us happiness and that's all what you need. Yeah, that's definitely true. Again, thank you so much for sharing your ideas. I completely agree with all of you all that we need to be a little bit more empathetic towards others as well because we don't know what they're going through. And we need to learn about ourselves also because it's been tough on us also. Even though we might be in denial, some people might say, yeah, everything is okay. But deep down inside, you know the challenges that you're facing. And it's important to take care about yourself as well. And something which I feel that I wanted to do this year is not to be attached to a lot of things. Maybe people, maybe your job, maybe something materialistic. Not because everything is temporary. You never know what's gonna happen. Like especially with people, you might meet people the next day. They might not be there. You might be having a good experience right now, but the next moment, you might be facing a downhill. You never know. And again, thank you very much for sharing your ideas with us. I believe the viewers they also got a good idea and people watching this would know that they are not alone on this because everybody is going through the same thing right now. It's just about how you handle the situation. So Thank that you, was Shana. it. Thank you so Thank much. You and Thank that you. was our episode on uh, Gen XYZ. Uh, we will be back again next week with another topic based on the youth. Just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Stay safe and have a good night.